It's Feedback Gaming, back for another mid-maxing super video, playing as Germany, going back around from where we began. Everyone starts with Germany, now we're going back to Germany. But this isn't just Germany, guys. This is going to be German Reich meets German Empire. Disclaimer, this is a video that Torior did. It's an exploit where you bypass the Rhineland. And it allows you to go down the focus tree for left and right. It's extremely OP. I saw the video. There's no way I couldn't have tried it out. And I tried it out. I gave it about 10 attempts. And I think I've mastered it. I think I found a way that I could super the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, I'm so excited to show this video. This video is going to kick. Oh, man. This is probably the biggest exploit I've ever done. And this is probably the most powerful super nation that I'm ever going to do too. If you think Germany can get strong in Hoi 4, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, first of all, let's get some of our divisions all pre. Not the wrong way around. Silly me. First of all, we are going to work on our industry and our construction, and we're going to work on oil production. That will come into effect later on. And we are also going to be working on mobile warfare. Great. We're also going to be working on oil production because we need them sweet oils, right? And we are going to sort out our production of guns and whatnot. We are going to make AA. I like AA. I like AA a lot, and I... Uh, I like the fact that Germany starts off with it with pre-research. I like that a lot. And the rest of them are going to light tanks. Perfect. We are making a few ships. You know what? I just don't care for ships. I really don't care for them. I don't care. I don't care. I know that might have triggered a few of you guys deleting those ships off. But honestly, it's kind of an annoying trailer because I have to keep micromanaging the ships. And it's just a bit of a pain. Okay. First of all... I have written like a bunch of notes of what I need to do for this video. So I'm just going to pull those notes up. Professional streamer, by the way. Here we go. So the first thing we need to do is not select a national focus. Get 139 political power. 139 political power. That is enough to justify on two nations, which is similar to what Torior did. But the nations I am choosing to justify on will be very different. Just give you the heads up about Torior. No beef. He makes awesome content. A lot of his content tends to overlap with me. I'm surprised I've never worked with him, to be honest with you. He is a sound as a pan. I really recommend you do check out his videos. He kind of does what I do. He makes these kind of like super challenges. Uh, but he's is more edited content and he, more easily to digest. Not like feedback gaming who can't be asked to edit. <laughs> Why are you watching me again? Why are you watching my video? Oh, I forgot to cancel the tungsten. Why do I always forget to do that? Yeah, at the start of the game, you get imported tungsten from... Uh, your good buddies, Sweden. Yes. Alright, merge all you guys up. Delete the Air Force. Um, change all the tanks into light tanks. Add them onto Rommel. Add that onto our best attack infantry dude. You. Add them onto the field marshal. Drag them over. Here, put you here. Go, 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 go. So. One thing I love to do with my videos is think of like the ultimate strategy, the way you can min-max it to the highest degree. Now, I always understand there's always something that I don't see, something that I miss. So I'm always looking for you guys to jump in and go, Dave, oh crap, you did that so good, but you do that better by doing X. Please comment below and say, you could have done this and it would have made the game better. You would have got even better and stronger if you'd done X. So I want to know all the X's in the chat, guys. And also, guys, if you enjoy min-maxing super videos with this kind of format, please let me know by liking this video. A single like on this video will help me uh, be able to buy a sandwich and uh, instead of just eating beans directly out of the can, unheated. Help a poor YouTuber. You remember those adverts a long time ago, commercials where they like it was like sponsor a child? They, like pay money. I feel like that's how the world's changed to. That's what Patreon is, guys. Sponsor a YouTuber. Okay, so we need 139 political power, and we've got it now. The two nations we're going to fabricate on are going to be Poland. <gasps> and 
and Austria. I am not training any divisions, which I really should. 18 divisions to be precise. Yes. Oh, actually, one thing you could do too. This is something I like to do sometimes, just for the lols. Is you make a... You send volunteers to Ethiopia. <laughs> this is so stupid, but it just, it's a good laugh, I suppose. You, uh, I've tried this several different ways to try and be able to hold back the Italians, but you really can't. Honestly, I've tried in so many different ways, and you just can't. But I gave him the best shot. You could send a few... It, this, is, this is just for funsies, really. I mean, everyone forgets about this Ethiopian war, because it's just, it's just the war that starts the game off with, you know? But, you know, like, why not take advantage of that and just put some cast there, you know? All you do is grind a tiny bit of air XP, and... You potentially could get an ace, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. There's going to be a few exploits in this video if you've got them already gathered. Probably we've got about four or five of them. The big one is going to be about bypassing German Reich focus tree and getting both focus trees. And there are going to be a bunch of others, but I'll explain them as we go. Okay. Um, so we are justifying now. We are going to select a national focus, which is going to be army innovations. And everything else is pretty good. Move you over, Mr. Rommel. To capture this airport, we'll leave. We get, we've got three air XP from this. Oh, wowsies. And total losses of one gas. When it comes down to air volunteers, you better always sending your biggest aircraft. In that case, tactical bombers tend to be a better choice than CAS. Now, CAS are cheaper. You can mass produce them. So, in the end, you end up with more CAS, doing more damage, and therefore you end up in the better in the long run in, in a traditional war. With air volunteers, because you're limited about that planes, you want to get as many planes that the best bang for your buck. So tactical bombers tend to be that aircraft. But I, see, people keep complaining that I zoom in too much. So I'm going to stop trying to stop doing that, okay? I'm going to try and just move very gently across the map. I'm one of those kind of people, you know, like, you sit with them on the desk or school or whatever, and they've got, like, a fidgety leg and they won't stop fidgeting it. That's me when I play Holy Fort, like, zooming in constantly. Can anyone relate to that, or am I the only one? Yeah, I'm the only one. Okay, I'll shut up. So what you can do here is just slow them down ever so slightly. There's no way you can win this war. I've even tried cheesy strategies where you um, you research all to get all the air doctrines to try and defend the Ethiopians, but you can't. I guess what you could do is send actual ground volunteers. You could send two divisions, put one here and one here in the mountains, and then you can hold out for a very long time. And to be honest with you, I'm trying to think if it's possible for to hold out for a really long time. But the truth is you just don't want to lose those two divisions, you know. And there's a better war coming up right here. That's right. It's an even better war. Another one. A better war. And that war is going to be the Spanish Civil War. And this is the one we're going to go for now. And I am going to send my best aircraft. I'm going to send my tactical bombers. I'm probably going to send about 100 of each. Because what I'm trying to do, guys, we're going to use an exploit. This exploit is called Grinding for Aces. Ah! You may have seen this in one of my previous other videos. Um, this is an exploit that apparently is really big in the meta community, but it's banned from a lot of meta games. So technically, it's not big in the meta community. Hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do with you is go here and then switch back to get the 50% boost. Boom! There we go. All right, we're going to move you guys here and we can set 198. That's a little bit frustrating. That means I have to take two off. And then go here, go here, and more air crews. If there are any game mechanics you guys would really like me to explain... Feel free. Oh, we've lost that air crew. Okay, we have to go here now. Yeah, there aren't any mechanics in Hoi 4 you guys would like me to explain. Uh, f feel free to comment below, because sometimes I play the game with the assumption that a lot of you guys have already played the game multiple times, and you're kind of semi-pro, and you've at least got 100, 200 hours in the game. So you kind of have a little bit of a clue what's going on. Um, so sometimes I just don't explain mechanics as thoroughly as I would used to. And I just don't want to sound like a broken record explaining the same mechanics over and over and over again okay the choices we've got right now is industrial concern oh my goodness the marching music oh my goodness there's only so much marching music i can take oh what just happened there that was really straight it seems strange to you that the, the volumes of I think weird just happened there, where it like felt like the, all the audio levels were like all over the place. That was strange. It doesn't look like the uh, nationalists are doing too well. 
They've lost some of the two key airports. Are they going to be able to get this one? No. The next one you go for is the Blitzkrieg Doctrine. That way you can get grinding XP, extra speed for armor, which equates to more reinforce rate. And you also get a reduction in the amount of time it takes to research doctrines, which is also pretty good because doctrines are pretty strong as Germany, if you're not already aware. For some reason, I think the music's too loud, quiet now. Am I going mad, guys? I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. It feels like the, the actual sounds are like really, really loud, but then the music's really quiet. I'm going mad? I'm a madman? Anyway, we'll sign those divisions there. We are low on guns, support equipment, and artillery. That's so good. We'll slowly, gradually grind them in. Ah! So this is the best airport in the whole of the Iberian region. Why? Because it's dead in the center, and therefore you get 100% mission efficiency. Uh, even though it says... Oh, I see what's happened here. So, this would actually be just under 97% mission efficiency. But, because I've gone for more air crews, it's pushed it up. Ah, uh, there you go. And a little living example, more air crews being very strong. But no one picking it. Why? Why? Very good question, guys. Very good question. All right, go here. There we go. So for, we're going to rush construction, as we usually do, because early construction equates to more buildings. Therefore, more buildings, more production, more all that good stuff. Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Do a lot of things I say not apply to you when you play Hearts of Iron 4? Or are you fairly... What, what level of skill would you say you're at? Are you super newbie? You have no idea of the mechanics? Or you've watched a few of my videos and you kind of have a bit of an idea? Please let me know in the comments below. Mifo bills. Now, Mifo bills are really good for this strat because you get an extra 25% construction speed for refineries and minus 5% consumer goods, so you have more factories to work with. Oh no. Elastic defense is one of the stronger doctrines because you get an extra 2% reinforce rate for your entire army. Reinforce rate is how quickly you get into battle. The quicker you get into battle, that means the more damage you can inflict initially. And that tends to be quite effective against attacking, for, for, for attacking armies. For attacking, attacking. We've lost that airport, so we've had to move back. And as you can see now, the efficiency isn't as high now. The tacticals are doing all right, but everything else is not so good. Anyway, it doesn't matter anyway. We went to be grinding. How many uh, aces have we got? We got zero. There we go. That's the one you start the game with. There was a oh, actually, I forgot to do the trick. Oh, damn. Okay, sorry. There we go. Sorry, I totally forgot about the exploit. There we go. Now we're getting aces. I'm not going to explain the exploit. I've explained it several times before. If you don't know what it is, look on my Ottoman series, and it'll break you down exactly how the, uh, the exploit works. But it allows you to grind for aces, and it allows you to get well, bonuses for your air wings, as well as bonus war support. How long until we're done? 55%. We're halfway there, guys. Living on a prayer. Alright. Making everything else. Everything's looking good. You're almost done. Lacking basic guns. All good. Usually I would send guns to the Nationalists, but... No, in this case I'm not going to, because I'm going to be in some early wars, and I'm going to gain a lot of combat XP anyway, so it's not going to be worthwhile, so there's no point. Blitzkrieg theories. Heinz Gudarian. The best general in World War II. Uh, 50 days, that's perfect. We are going to go for the four-year plan. Why am I going for the four-year plan now? And Why didn't I do that first? The reason why is you get two 50% boosts for industry, so it allows us to rush Disperse Industry 3 and 4. I have noticed recently Disperse Industry is quite effective for Germany, as well as the Soviet Union, and a few other major powers in the game. It tends to be more effective for the countries with higher production levels. Uh, smaller nations, I find that concentrated seem to work out better. What the hell's going on here? Crazy. How many uh, aces do we get now? We got... Oh, that's a good amount. We got about eight of them. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I can't count. Feedback gaming is so trash. You can't even count. I know, guys. I've read all the Reddit posts. I know the hate, boys. I know you don't like me. You guys don't hate me anymore. I know. It's hard, man. It's hard. I try so hard to impress you guys. It's so impossible to impress. We are going to go for radio now because we are going to be in some wars fairly soon. And having that radio is definitely worthwhile because it allows you to attack quicker, harder, and faster. It looks like the Republicans are probably going to win this, even with our air support. 
But it doesn't actually matter who wins or loses, because at this stage, it don't... It, did I say it don't matter? It don't matter. The one thing that can be relevant if we look into the future, way into the future, is if the Republicans do win, there's a chance they may join the common turn later in the game. I guess for a safer option, they're better off for the fascists winning. In that case, maybe I should send a few guns then. Ah, balls. All right, we'll send that. Uh, once, and you can have one support equipment per month. The reason why I do that is because there was an old thing before that if you sent all your equipment, and if you didn't have any support, uh, lend lease currently active, you didn't get the XP that grinded into your bank account. So that's the reason why I do that. I know it sounds kind of weird. Yeah, I've just had hindsight. I like looked into the future just for a second, and I just realized it is better off if the Nationalists win. It is better off if the Nationalists win, so we're going to let the Nationalists win. Just, we want the Nationalists to win. 79%. Perfect. So this is a question I don't usually ask, but if anyone has editing experience, and you're looking to get paid to do editing work, basically edit these videos just to cut them down and, and do jump cuts, Feel free to send me an email uh, or tweet at me. Um, I'm I'm willing to pay someone to edit down my content just to make it like just jump cuts, like like some of the YouTubers do. Like Remy does these videos as well as Torior does these videos. Just the same format, but instead of just a completely unedited let's play, it's going to be edited down and some of just the more boring bits like this right now, waiting for something to happen, and that's it. All right, we are going to rush for the Autobahn. Plastic defense is done. The Blitzkrieg is on its way. I also like to do this too. I like to build here, here, and here in ahead of time. Usually I don't want to build in these places until I've maxed out the uh, infrastructure, which we're working on that now anyway. So eventually when that will be ready, then we'll be able to go. More than likely, the reason why the Republicans are winning is the... Uh, the... The Russians are helping them. We we'll train four more divisions and stick them on this Eastern Prussian front line. Then shoot guys first. All equipment we need the most. Of interesting. I put one here and one here. Looks like it's a bit of a stalemate right now. They've made like this big bulge on the front line here. Will this be a movement? Who's attacking? Who's defending? It looks like the Nationalists are making an attack here. Let's have a cheeky look. Yep, we've sent all the guns. But now they're fueled for another assault. And it looks like we've lost air control here too. Looks like, look, oil is doing good now. Oh, that's beautiful. You're probably wondering too, why am I building light cruisers? Well, I found I like to mass light cruisers. Light cruisers have the most anti-air. No, I actually think that's not true. I think heavy cruisers, battleships, and battle cruisers do have more AA. But because they're larger ships and they're more expensive, they're less numerous. So overall, you end up with more light cruisers, so therefore more AA, just based on sheer numbers and based on sheer stats. And it just tends to be a thing in, in a lot of single-player multiplayer games that since if you have more AA on the sea, you tend to be more effective at just kind of combating enemy ships trying to torpedo you. Just something I've noticed. So the light cruisers aren't necessarily to fight the enemy ships. They're just to, like, support the existing craft. And plus they can shoot down uh, destroyers too. Shoot down destroyers. Do you actually shoot down a destroyer? Did I just make that up? Alright. There we go. So we are complete with that now. We'll send these guys back home. We are going to build all of our air wings back up just in the Alpine region. We'll make big fat ugly air wings. I don't really care because we're going to be just in these as time goes on anyway. The most rubbish part of this playthrough you're going to watch right now is the amount of times you have to disband airwigs, disband your army, reform them, is a little bit tedious. And yeah, I must admit, it's a bit annoying, but it is what it is. All right, what do we go for now? We go for extensive conscription. Now, the question is, why do you go for extensive conscription right now? Because when you are fascist, you have the ability to go for extensive conscription at any time, regardless of your whether you're at war or not. Where if you're democratic... Or if you are not aligned, you have to be at war. There are some exceptions to that rule. In fact, there's a lot of exceptions to that rule now. Think about it. All right, we're going to deploy you guys early. Get you to move over. We just need a few more divisions here just to make this a little bit safer. Because they could just walk to Honnersburg. Okay, everyone get into position. Everyone's here. That is jolly good. First attack is going to be into the Austrians. 
So the way this works is, if you declare war on two nations simultaneously, it will spike world tension. But if it is above 25% world tension, they can get it guaranteed by another nation. But if you're already currently at war, they can't get guaranteed. It won't make any difference anyway. So there you go. All right, we're going to go here, then here. You're going to go here. And we're just basically going to grab Graz and Vienna and Salzburg. And if we do that, the war is over. We'll be home by Christmas, boys. As you can say, I'm uh, best to bomb the Alpine region. Uh, you guys are about to go here and here. Oh, hello there, sir. In this case, if you distract one of the divisions, you'll be all good. Do not research anymore. Remember, we went for the industry bonuses. Please, no. We went for the industry bonuses so we can get Disperse 3 and 4 to get those extra factory slots and to get the extra factory output. Do not select anything else. Do not select them. I'm going to go for Panzer 3 now. Oh, look. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a horse. So we can grab Vienna, Graz, and Salzburg. Ah, oh, I should just grab two of them. It's over. Rip. Got an extra army here. Go here. Go here. Everyone railroad. Yep, railroad the front line. Realize we haven't got radio right now, so our offensive capabilities are actually kind of crap. Battle of the Baltic. Two submarines sunk. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Do not spend your political power. You'll need that political power. It is important. What is it important for? Find out in the next episode. No, we're not done yet. <laughs> okay, we need our planes. Everyone go here on and here. There we go. Bombing things. and I guess what I could do is just assign some aces. Because it seems stupid like to grind all these aces out but not actually use them. So we'll just use them. There we go. We're actually bombing them now. So now you can see that we're slowly pushing them back due to the fact that we, we have air support. Air support is just really awesome for like knocking... Oops, back. I just like the way it works. I don't know whether it's realistic or not. I'm not even sure, but I just like the way it is. I like the, what it does, and I like what it is. Then we activate you, and then we activate you, and there we go. They're in full retreat now. You can see some of the divisions have broken down a little bit from the initial attack. For some reason, the Polish are really ballsy at the start of the war, and they always attack you. Uh, Danzig, Warsaw, and Krakow take out the three. In most cases, Poland will be vaporized. There's an opportunity for a pocket here, so I am actually going to take that. Where's this guy? Rommel, go here. I'd ideally like to close this pocket with my tank division. Why? Because I get extra combat bonus XP. Ball of Thor. As the actual proper pronunciation of Warsaw. I'm totally joking, guys. Holy crap. You guys get so salty in the comments. <laughs> Dave, oh, why do you not say this right? <laughs> I love you guys, guys. I know I love you guys, all right? I'll be honest, in the old days when I first started YouTubing, the, the comments used to really get to me. And I've actually gone a full 180 on that. I actually don't, they don't really don't bother me at all anymore. That won't, that, that doesn't mean I don't reply to a lot of them and get really salty and angry at them though. <laughs> Poland is gone. Okay, great. Now move all of our troops over to the coastline. Um, to Wells Holmes Haven. Will Holmes Haven. We have defeated the one submarine. Gun. Alright, are we all good now, boys? Yeah, we're all good. We're just repairing roads, so that's all good. Look at this. Ah! 1937, boys. Look at this glorious German Reich. German, glorious German Reich. You know what? You can have all these Polish guns. Polish guns. Polish guns. I don't think the Nationalists are going to win. Ideally, I'll repeat this. Ideally, you want the uh, the Nationalists to win. Oh no, they are going to pay our bills. Okay, now we are going to go for oppose Hitler. And at the same time, whilst you're doing Hitler, because you have demilitarized the, the Rhineland, uh, you can now um, bypass. So there you go. Now you have access to both areas of the focus tree. So just to explain this exploit because it's the first time I've ever done it. The way it works is Rhineland can be bypassed if the Rhineland has already been demilitarized. Why would it already be demilitarized? Well, it will be demilitarized if you have already 
been at war at some stage. That's what it means. So as you can see, we were at war with Poland and Austria. Because of that, <gasps> the Hindenburg incident. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I had this idea in my head that I'd have to replay this over and over again because the Hindenburg can't blow up. The Hindenburg has to survive to form the Holy Roman Empire. You're probably thinking, what the hell does that even mean? I will explain it. Time goes on, okay. So look, Anschluss has been be bypassed as well. Why? Because there is no Austria. Now, Rio Sir Eastern claims too would be bypassed if Lithuania didn't exist. And Danzig and war would be bypassed if there was no Poland. So in Torio's video, he fabricated on Poland and Lithuania. Now that is a valid strategy as well, because remember it would bypass Eastern claims for Lithuania. So, I guess the point I'm getting at right now is that it doesn't actually matter whether you go for Poland, Austria, or Lithuania, or a combination of the two. You can't do all three because the UK will guarantee one of them and you'll end up in, at war with the UK and the Allies. And you don't want to do that because that's going to cause problems for you in the future. Yeah, did I explain myself alright then? Yeah, I went for Austria and Germany because Austria's got more factories and I want more factories, you know? I want to be super fat and strong, okay? I want to do that by... Uh... Like gobbling up the biggest and strongest nations possible. I really would like to help out the Spanish, but I just really don't want to. <laughs> that's, that's the wiki's explanation ever, isn't it? I just don't want to. I just don't want to. So, the Hindenburg disaster has a 30% chance of happening, okay? So I'll start again. It has a 70% chance of happening, the Hindenburg disaster. Now, the Hindenburg incident is before the disaster happens, they acknowledge it and then it stops it from happening. And that's a 30% chance. Now, for us to form the Holy Roman Empire, you need the incident, not the Hindenburg disaster. How do you avoid the Hindenburg disaster? One method is to reload the save game over and over again. So, just to clarify, isn't Iron Man compatible, okay? It isn't Iron Man compatible. Um, but that doesn't mean you can try an Iron Man, but there's a 70% there's chance you'll fail and you have to keep reloading. It's a bit annoying, that's all. Uh, what else? Is that everything you need to say? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to go for Captain of Industry, which gives an extra 10% production bonus for fineries, civvies, and infrastructure. We have a Republican Spain oh, with 10 divisions. Most of them were the divisions they just spawn with. Okay, let's have a little decision now what you need to go for. Because at this point, you can kind of fan out into different areas and choose what you need to build and what you need to do. I think what I am going to focus on right now is trying to go for mechanized computing. Because I want to keep up with all the other powers in the game. Oh, he's ill. Why is he ill? Oh, Rommel's ill as well. It's because they're sat in a marsh. <laughs> Chance of sickness 100%. Oh, wow. Well. So, oh, Amelia Earhart has circumvented the globe. We are getting an ahistorical playthrough, and trust me, what's this? This is an interesting Germany, this is very ahistorical. Trust me, the ahistoricalness is going to be going higher and higher. I just realized I got a lot of air XP too, so I'm going to spend that. Air XP, yep, why not? Okay, so this is the event to fire the Civil War. So we are going to do another exploit right now, and this exploit was made famous and popular by the spiffing Brits, the man, the myth, the legend, the actual British. Is he really British? I don't actually know, question mark. Anyway, to do this exploit, what you do is before you fire a civil war, you make sure your entire army is at sea. Why? So when a civil war fires, half of your army or a proportion of your army, depending on certain events and conditions, can be split in half between your enemy and yourself. If your entire army is at sea, when you fire the civil war, you get your entire army. Oh, look at that, eh? Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, so we select an entire army now. And uh, we split them into four armies. We put them all on a field marshal. We will go for Gunther again. I'm going to sort them by their attack ability because we want some good attack guys.
Okay, and then we're going to draw our front line over just the front line of Germany. I'm not interested in Austria, okay? So what I want to do now is the reason why we've saved a little bit of political power is I want to cover total mobilization. Yes, this is what Torio did in his video, and I am going to do it in a very similar fashion. We need to, the way you go for total mob is it needs to be a comparison between you and your enemy to see who has the most factories. And if you're a against like enemy and that's a lot stronger than you and has more factories, you have the ability to go total mobilization. I can't do that because I, I have too many factories. So what I can do is give away some of my factories to do that. Let's give them all away to United States of America. I'll wait a day. And we can go total mobilization. And then you just revert what you just did because you want all your factories. Gonna go full speed, gonna go aggressive, and we are literally gonna mop up the entire country. Now, this is a civil war that's significantly easier for two factors. One, we have our entire army, and they have no army other than the divisions, the free crappy divisions that spawn. And secondly, too, they have all a larger front line to cover. They've got all these parts of Austria here, and they have all these parts of Poland in the east, too. So what tends to happen is AI gets really confused. It's like, I don't have any enough divisions to hold all these front lines. What do I do? So it kind of like <laughs> splits them into two parts and it just causes lots of problems for them and you can just mop them up at lightning speed look at this i also want to help out the chinese too i'm going to send those and we will send them we oh, can have all of those artillery a month once, once, once. Oh, actually, no. We're just we're actually going to send them monthly. Actually, uh, let's just keep doing it. Good. So as you capture um, uh, portions of Germany again, the, the fascist government end up completely shredding up Germany. I think this is a really cool mechanic. I like this. It, it's kind of like it, it makes civil wars feel brutal. Honestly, in my opinion, I think they could make them more brutal by just upping this even more. I would really like to see that. Just make civil wars just like so brutal. It makes you think twice. Like, should I really go for a civil war? The uh, the leader of Germany has been found dead. And completely shredded all of Germany again. Nice. Whew. We are now going to go for secure a new state. Ah! German military junta. This is an event that's really cool because you have the ability later on to uh, do some sexes, some exciting things. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to say. And there you go. I'm going to go for that one. So the bottom one basically gives them stability and loses fascist support. But this bottom one is spicy because it unlocks a secret, special, hidden event that I'll talk about on a later episode. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. Remember to like and to subscribe. Remember, guys, if you are, comment below. Please tell me how you think of this series. Tell me if you're mad that I'm stealing Toriel's ideas. Tell me if you're mad if I'm stealing Spiffing Brit's ideas. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a really good day. See you soon. Bye-bye.